Escape Duino, Lessons in Escape Room Prop Building with Arduino Programming. Let's take a look at Escape Room Resources Prop Box. It's essentially an Arduino Pro Mini with two built-in MOSFET switches for switching LEDs or mag locks. It can be used in a puzzle like the old switcheroo here, where light switches have to be in the right position in order to solve the puzzle and unlock the mag lock and light a LED. In order to reset the puzzle, simply put the puzzle out of order and in a few minutes or seconds, depending on what you program, you can re-engage the magnetic lock and start the game again. PropBox has six dedicated inputs. It has two dedicated outputs, 12 volts, and a five volt power supply and some analog inputs. Let's look at the switcheroo puzzle. The wires come in and go through the toggle switches. When the toggle switches all make the connection, it takes the ground from one side and transfers it back to the Arduino. Let's hook it up. Just grab the ground, screw it in, make sure it's nice and tight, and put the other input in, let's say, pin four. Now let's hook up the LED lighting and the 12 volt supply for the magnetic lock. Put them both together because they go into the single 12 volt output on the output side. Next, we'll hook up the negative ends of the LEDs and the mag lock. We're switching the negative on this Arduino, as we'll see later. And there you have it. We have our input coming into line four we have our outputs here, the positive end, and on the other two, the negative ends that are switched for our LED and our mag lock. And we have the negative end of our switches that will be grounded in the puzzle. Because this prop can also be powered by the MSK, it can have a RJ45 power supply, but we use a barrel adapter. It's all powered up and the magnet sticks, ready to go. Let's watch it work again. Boom! There you have it. Now for the fun part. This prop box comes pre-programmed and 100% working, but wouldn't it be cool if you could make and program your own puzzles? Here's how to do it. The only additional hardware you need to program is one of these FTDI programmers. Now, I'll be selling them on my website, but you can also get them from SparkFun. The programmers attach to the Arduino and allow interface between your PC or laptop to talk to the Arduino and program it. One programmer, because it's separate, will do many Arduinos. Simply just plug it into your computer and download the software and you can write and change the program. It's free and easy to get the program from Arduino. Just Google Arduino and go to their website and find your correct operating system and download the program. Now you can uh, contribute if you like, and it's a, always a good idea. And in no time at all, you're going to have your own Arduino installed on your own PC, and you can use it to program your own puzzle props. We're gonna get started with the one you just saw, the one for the PropBox Pro old switcheroo puzzle. Let's go through it. Starting with commenting, where the slant star and the star slant can identify important details about your program without actually loading it to the Arduino when it comes time to implement it. Commenting is a great way to remind yourself what you're doing. Now I have to say there are a million tutorials and really good ones, much better than this one, on how to program Arduinos. This just is going to run through the program for the prop box and explain how easy it is to make puzzle pieces.
The first comments here simply describe the author, program name, and the date it was created, as well as a description of some of the hardwired pins that will always stay the same. We saw that pin 4 is the input, and the outputs were pins 3 and 2 for the LED and maglock. The next set of commands are only run once at the very beginning of the program. They start by naming variables. Now, variables are easy to relate to names for pins that make programming more intuitive. For example, we give pin 13 the variable name LED. And from that point on, whenever we mention LED, it means pin 13 in the program. We do this because some programs are thousands of line of code. And you may not remember what turning on pin 13 does, but you will remember what turning on LED does. This prop can talk to the MSK through the MSK wire, so we name it as a variable, but we won't be using it in this standalone version. What is more important is that we name a variable that stores if the puzzle has been solved or not. In this case, we simply call it puzzle. The setup is where we tell the Arduino what pins do what. Because most pins on the Arduino can be inputs or outputs, we have to tell it which is which. For this puzzle, we need five outputs and one input for the light switch prop. An input is like a person standing in a doorway waiting to be told something. In our case, we tell the input if the puzzle has been solved or not by completing the circuit on the light switch puzzle. Now, this gets a little confusing because we can tell it that it's been solved, but until then, there's nothing going to the pin. So it just sort of sits there wondering what to do and we have to tell it to do something. Otherwise it's called a floating pin. So we use a uh, internal resistor on the Arduino board. And this is initialized by just putting the word pull up after input. So the internal pull up resistor tells it that it's not solved until the toggle or the light switch tells it it is solved. It's a little bit complicated, but um, there's a lot of tutorials on floating pins and why they cause problems. And believe me, they cause problems. So if you have a pin, you can't just leave it dangling in the wind. It's got to either be told one way or the other. And this is what the internal pull-up pin does. The last part of the setup is setting the pins to what we want them to be. We want the maglock on or energized so it can lock and the output to indicator LED on the board on to tell us that the mag locks on to start. Remember everything in this section runs once and at the start of the program at power up. Now we're on the meat of the program where everything happens. First we tell our variable for the puzzle we simply called puzzle to look at pin 4 where we wired the light switches and change its state to 0 or 1 or high or low to whatever it sees at that pin. If it sees zero volts, as in the puzzle is solved, it calls itself low. And if it sees five volts, as in the puzzle is not solved, it calls itself high. So now we have a variable that is either high or low depending on if the puzzle has been solved or not. Then we have a function that does something depending on what the answer is. If the puzzle is solved or is equal to low, then wait 1500 milliseconds or 1.5 seconds and check again. This delay is entirely programmable and is the amount of time the program waits before executing the reward for solving the puzzle. The reason why you make guests wait a second and a half is to avoid someone just flicking switches randomly up and down quickly to solve the puzzle. With this delay in, they have to wait at least 1.5 seconds before it does something, so this will avoid that random flicking. So after 1.5 seconds, if the puzzle is solved, still, then the Arduino performs the reward sequence and unlocks the maglock on pin 2 by writing it low or off, turning off the green indicator LED by output 2 by writing it low, and turning on the blue LED, pin 12. Also, it writes pin 11 high that turns on the blue LED indicator. And that would be the end of it, except for the fact that the puzzle needs to be reset for the next group of people through. Now, you could just unplug the prop and start again, but we're far too clever for that, and we do it through programming. And here's how we do it. Look down the program to the else line. 
The first part looked at the puzzle variable and asked if it was solved, and if it was, it performed the reward, but this else line is what happens if the puzzle is not solved. Essentially, it says if the puzzle has not been solved, lock the lock and turn off the LED. So every time the Arduino starts its loop, it looks to see if the puzzle has been solved, and if it has, it unlocks a mag lock and turns on the LED. But if the puzzle has not been solved, it locks the mag lock and turns off the LED. So there you have an explanation of the puzzle you saw in terms of the Arduino program behind it. And this is just scratching the surface of what you can do with Escape Room Resources Prop Box Pro. You can use it for magnetic props, light break props, and sequence button props that have to be pressed in the right order in order to trigger the effect. And be sure to watch for our standalone Prop Master Pro Mini that has four outputs for multiple colors on red, green, blue displays and mag locks. If you want the code or have any other questions, please email me at info at escaperoomresource.com. And as always, thanks for watching and be sure to like us so we can keep providing new videos.